How many instructors got hired? Yeah. Hired. Not fired. Oh, hired? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not sure actually. I, I don't keep track. I thought, I thought you guys like hired two new ones. So no, no. We are maybe some part time faculty we, we hired, but yeah. the number of full time faculty is still the same as the last. I remember there's five. You guys like five. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I know I, I know the full-time faculty just because I see them in meetings a lot. Um, I know we're we're putting out a search this year to hire some new faculty for next year. But this year, but this year our full-time faculty stays the same. I see. Because I know you guys were struggling. Gets you lost yeah. So. It's it's all staffing is always a struggle. Yeah. It's, it's Even always Wayne hard. Said he's probably the guy. He probably had to teach fluids. Yeah, I know. He's he's upset. He, I think he's upset about that because usually I'm teaching fluids. But I, 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 I'm I doing a academic advising this semester, so that means I get I one class off. I saw that. Uh, yeah. Email. Yeah. Advising you. You and uh, uh, Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so he, and so Wang is teaching the class, the food class that I would be teaching. So he's upset because he's teaching my class. I <laughs> see. He's not, he's not actually upset. He's just, no, no, he's just, it's just he, he said the last time he taught fluid was 10 years ago. So he, has to <laughs> he, he, he knows fluid. He'll be fine. He has to retrain himself. <laughs> Question. <laughs> So for this class, I know there's there's a pretty high demand for this class, and so and the nice thing is this room's big, and so we can accommodate more. So I'll probably probably go through add about ten students on the waitlist. Yeah, so so stick tight, and so I'll I'll ask. Oh yeah, yeah. So so I mean I'll I'll see what the waitlist is like at the end of the week, 
And so I've, I've taken like 52 students in this class before. So I, I've, I've done it before. Um, the only thing is that we like to keep our enrollment across the different classes kind of more, more even, just because it, it kind of helps kind of with, with their uh, uh, evaluations too. And so I know I can probably add at least 10 and then I'll try to push for more, but it's going to be up to the department. So yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no. It's not till next end of next week. I tell you, you got something. Right, exactly. But I, I try. I try to let people know by end of this week, just so that they can yeah. plan plan accordingly. Yeah.
And then C section it says how oh, hard it is to stop. So this like half <laughs> 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 But I just think I should I
All right, it's 5 30, so let's go and get started. All right, good after, uh, I guess it's good evening now. So, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Welcome. We have a full, very full room. I'm hoping the most full I've seen this classroom before. Uh, but welcome. So, this is EGB 410 uh, Introduction to Finite Element Analysis. My name is uh, Professor Justin Tran, and I will be your instructor for this course. Right? And so I guess first thing, you know, uh, first thing with my name, um, you know, if you've had me before, you, you probably know this, but, you know, I'm, I'm not too particular what you, you call me. So, you know, call me whatever is comfortable for you. So I've had people call me Dr. Tran, Professor Tran, Justin, Dick Bag, all sorts of different things. So, you know, whatever whatever is comfortable for you, you know, I've, I've grown up in the era of online gaming, so I've had, you know, all worse things thrown at me before. Probably by kids that are probably only 12 years old. Okay, um, so a little bit about myself. So my office is in this building. So my office is just kind of two floors up. So you kind of walk up the stairs or the elevator up. That's my office, okay? Um, it's not the whole floor, but it's just a room on that floor. It's CS526, okay? And my email, which I hope is, is something that, um, you know, that you will remember, or at least is in your autocomplete, is just ran at fortune.edu. Okay? Very easy to remember because, you know, I... I like to think that probably it should belong to some running club here at Fullerton, but it's it's not. It's my email. It's my name, so I can't really do much about it. Right? Um, so I grew up around here. So my hometown is Cypress, California. So if you are familiar with that, it's just kind of about 10 miles west here on the 91. Um, so this is very much home for me, you know, which is great. I see my parents like every other weekend. Um, you know, they're happy. I kind of settled down here. I'm happy like, to see them. And so, you know, I, I, I know this area a lot. A lot of my friends came to Cal State Fortune, so you know, I'm very happy that I got a job here. Okay. A bit about my background: I got my bachelor's from UCLA, my master's from UCSD, and my PhD from Stanford, all in mechanical engineering. So I know this department and this field very well. And my research interests uh, are actually quite in line with this class: is I, I like to find engineering applications for uh, biomedical problems. In particular, I like to use computational technology, like finite elements, to uh, to do a lot of simulations and you know we'll be doing a lot of that in this class okay. all right learning objectives and so uh this is something you'll see a lot in, in uh in one of my classes so if you've had me before you know and so what i like to do before every class is i like to have a list of the learning objectives for the day okay and so you can think of the learning objectives as kind of basically like an outline of you know what you're going to learn that day okay and i and i write them very carefully so i always i always make sure to write them starting with the verb um, to basically um, show you uh, basically a kind of skill or a kind of way that you can demonstrate your knowledge. Okay? And so, for example, here, and so, you know, uh, the first learning objective we're going to have for today is to describe the use and utility of finite element analysis and engineering work. Okay? And so when you exit that door today or when you exit the Zoom room, okay, uh, you should be able to, you know, describe to someone the use and utility of finite elements. And the great thing is, you know, I write these in a way that you can kind of test yourself. And so, you know, when the class is over, you know, you get into the elevator, you see someone from outside the class like, hey, this is the use and utility of finite element analysis. I just learned this in EGME 410 over there. Okay. If you can do that, and then, you know, you're, you're, you're good. Okay? Um, that person may not want to be your friend, but, you know, at least you'll, you'll pick up something good from the lecture today. Okay. Uh, and so what I always tell people is that, you know, after every, I mean, at the beginning of every lecture, you know, always try to always write down the, the learning objectives for the day. And then when we're done with the lecture, you know, go back to the learning objectives and see if you can do all those tasks. Okay. Uh, if you can, um, then that's great. Then you pick up everything that you that I wanted you to pick up from the lecture. If not, you know, that it might be a good idea to look back at your notes or maybe you know come to my office hours or send me an email just so you can clear up some, some points of confusion. Okay. Okay, and so what is finite element analysis? All right. And so um, you know, kind of the goal for today is, you know. I don't want to cover any actual content today because I think, you know, the first days, you know, it's my first time meeting a lot of you and first time a lot of you are meeting me. And so, you know, I think it's not, it's not a great time for actual learning. And so, you know, what I like to do on the first day is I like to, I, you know, you know, I, I usually don't do slides, but I do it for today just to show some pictures. I want to give you guys kind of a sense of what this class is about uh, because I know some of you are, 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 you know, you're making decisions on what classes you want to take. And so I want to, I want to make sure you guys meet today with you know, a good sense of what you're going to learn in this class. What you can expect and i think you know for those of you that you know are, are, are going to stick around you know it's, it's kind of a good table setter for you know for the rest of the semester okay. all 
All right, so first let's let's start by defining what finite element analysis is. Okay, so you might you might have heard this be called FEA or FEM. Okay, and so if you look up the def the, the specific definition for FEA is that it's a numerical technique for solving differential equations on arbitrary geometries. Okay? Um, and so um, you know that's kind of a very stuffy definition. I think maybe you know for those of you who have maybe have some experience with ANSYS or you know maybe you've heard some people take the class, and that might be different from kind of what you've heard about what FEA is. Okay, but this is kind of the formal definition. And so I think the way the way that we kind of go from this definition to I think what a lot of people know, where a lot of people think of FEA as like stress analysis simulations. Um, you know, the way we kind of get there is that a lot of our, a lot of physical processes, you know, especially, you know, applied mathematics, like engineering, you think of like solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, right? A lot of those phenomena are governed by differential equation. And so if you think back to your previous classes, right? And so if you think back to your fluid mechanics class 333, we had the Navier-Stokes equation, right? If you think back to heat transfer class, we had things like the heat equation or the fin equation, right? All of these are differential equations. And probably, you know, one thing that you probably realize when you're taking those classes, it's really freaking hard to solve differential equations. And so, you know, what, and so engineers, you know, back in the day felt the same as you. And what they did was they developed this finite element method to say that, you know, we hate solving differential equations, so let's make a computer do it. And that's kind of how FEA was, was born, okay? Uh, and the nice thing about FEA is that, you know, it, it puts these problems in a way that computers can really help. Because okay? what computers are, are really, really good at um, they're really, really good at performing what I call arithmetic operations. So like basic addition, basic subtraction, linear algebra, multiplication division, okay? And so what finite element analysis does is that it takes these kind of very physical, very engineering problems and puts them in a mathematical form that computers can solve for you, okay? Um, and so that's kind of what the essence of what FEA is, right? And kind of the invention of FEA has kind of brought about kind of a new advent of how we, of how a lot of engineering is performed. Because okay? what that allows us is that it allows the design and analysis of engineering systems uh, with very complex geometries and very complex conditions to be done kind of very easily on a computer. Okay? Um, and since then, you know, a lot of development has taken place where like there's a lot of really nice software packages out there, uh, packages like ANSYS, which kind of does a lot of this for you. Okay? Um, and um, you know what you'll see is that a class like this is kind of is is kind of a good way to bridge the gap because you know probably in your previous classes you worked on like a fluid mechanics problem or a solid mechanics problem you worked on very simple geometries very simple you know conditions right you did a simple beam or you flow in a pipe or something like that okay uh, which is great you know those are really cool but you know that's not you know it's it's a lot different from you know designing a simple beam to designing like an entire freaking building right. And so finite element analysis is kind of how you bridge that gap. Okay? So from the, from the conceptual understanding to actually doing something practical. Okay, and so uh, with that, you know, I want to define these kind of three types of analyses. And so, um, you know, number one, we have analytical methods. Okay? And so these are kind of the pen and paper methods that you probably uh, know already. Okay, so these are the way, the way this type of analysis works is that you um, have a, a problem okay? and you have the governing equations. And you're going to solve those equations by hand. Okay? And so this is probably what you've done for most of your classes up until this point. Okay. Um, and so the nice thing about analytical methods is that you know it's it's pretty fast, okay? uh, and it's very inexpensive. And so all it takes is just a pencil and a paper. Uh, but of course, you're limited to very very simple problems like we've seen before. Okay? All right. Number two. Number two is experimental. And so um, you know the good thing is that. You know, we live in a physical world and mother nature is the best way to find out whether something works or, or not, okay? And so, you know, if you want to get kind of the best data on whether your design is going to work, you know, the best, best thing to do is just to go out and try it, okay? And there's no disputing your data because it actually happened, right? And so there's no way of saying that, you know, I, I crashed this car and it blew up, right? No one's going to dispute that because, you know, you can see the pile of rubble that used to be your car afterwards, okay? Um, and so experiments, you know, the experimental methods are, are always going to have a place in engineering analysis because, you know, just because it, it actually happened. Right? And so I always say that the best data that you can get is always going to be from an experiment. Okay? No matter how good your, your simulation is or how good your calculations are, you know, you're never going to convince someone that's actually ran the experiment. But the problem with experiments is that they're often very expensive and they can be very time consuming as well. 
Because if you think about, um, you know, like an engineering company, like an aerospace company, right? And so say you're designing a rocket ship and you want to test your design, it's going to cost a few billion dollars to build your rocket ship just to test something, right? And, you know, that kind of money doesn't grow on trees. And so, you know, experiments are always going to have a place, but you kind of have to be careful about you know, when, you, when you choose to do experiments. All right, and so number three is computation. So of course, this is this is the method that we're going to focus on the most in this class, right? And so it bears a lot of similarities with analytical in that we're going to be focusing on uh, differential equations or the governing differential equations, but the way we solve them is going to be different. And so we're going to use computers to solve them instead of um, you know pencil and paper. Right? And so the nice thing about computational methods is that it can handle very complex situations very easily, uh, but it can be very tricky to set up as well. And you'll, you'll find, you'll kind of discover that as, as we go out through the class. All right, so let's, let's look at some examples here. And so, you know, here we have an example from solid mechanics. And so here we have a beam. And so you've probably seen this exact beam in your previous classes, right? And so what you can do is that you can solve the beam equations to solve for, you know, how much the beam is going to deflect, right? So that's something you can do by hand. But, you know, if you were, if you wanted to apply that same methodology to design like a building, right? Um, you know, you, you would either have to be very, you know, you have a lot of patience or, you know, be very uh, um, masochistic in order to, you know, try to do all those calculations by hand. And so the way most people do is that we rely on computers, computer software to do it for us. And so here's kind of an example of what you can see. All right, another example is heat transfer. So if you've taken a heat transfer class, you've done an example like this. Uh, and so, you know, you have a solid block of material we have two different temperatures and you can solve for how the temperature varies in between the two, okay, very simple. But if you wanted to do an analysis of like, like a heat turbine, something like this, where you have like very hot flows of air going over it, you know, that's gonna be very, very hard to do by hand. So you know, you're gonna need to do that with uh, simulations in order to find, you know, where are the hot spots on your, on your machine is. All right, and then finally we have fluid mechanics. So, so here we have simple flow in a pipe. And so you can solve this using the average Stokes equations because it's a very simple geometry. Um, but if you want to do something like this, then you would have to use simulations. Right? So this, so this actually is, is a picture from a, a colleague of mine. And so this is actually a simulation of blood flow inside, inside your body. And so what he's testing out is that he's testing out a, a, a novel surgery actually. Right? And so these two blood vessels right here, they're normally not connected, but this patient has a, uh, has a heart condition where it makes it hard to pump. And so what he proposes is to actually connect these two blood vessels together to kind of help take some load off the heart. Okay. And the cool thing is that, you know, my, my colleague is, is not, he's not a medical person, um, although he might tell you otherwise. I mean, he's, his background is purely engineering, but he was able to come up with this, this novel surgical technique using just purely simulations. And actually this is in, this is in the clinical trials right now. So there are people are actually testing this to, to see what, how effective it is. Um, and this is something that you can really only do with simulations because, you know, um, this patient or this, this, these surgeries are actually designed for little kids. And so, you know, uh, if you wanted to actually try this in a little kid, you know, no parent is going to say like, oh yeah, sure. Test your freaking surgery on my little kid. He might die from your surgery. Yeah. Come up with an idea like that for it to actually work. What, what, I don't know, money is involved in that. Like, right yeah, no, it was, it was part of his, uh, his, uh, his dissertation research. And so, you know, he was, he was still, um, you know, he was still going for his, his PhD at the, at the time. So this was a big part of it. So um, if I recall, he was actually, so this particular surgery is actually part of a three stage. Normally the way that these, these babies are, are, are fixed that they, they take, they do three surgeries kind of in sequence. And so what he's proposing is that, you know, you can do just this surgery and one more. And so you cut the number of surgeries by two because he looked, he did simulations of those three surgeries before and he saw that, you know, we can cut that down based on the simulation results. Yeah. Right. And so uh, I want to turn this to you guys. And so, you know, I, I think what's cool about this class, and, and I think, you know, at this point, you know, I think this class, uh, I think people kind of are starting to, to learn about it. I think a lot of you guys are coming in with specific applications in mind. I know a lot of you guys are coming, a lot of you guys are doing senior design at the time, at, at the moment, I mean. A lot of you guys are coming from like your student projects, like Baja, like, uh, like Formula. And so I want to hear you know, kind of what you guys are interested in applying FDA to, um, you know, as, as we move forward in this class. So just go ahead and shout it out. All right, cool, cool. Yep. Airflow over a car. Airflow over a car, yeah, that one's, that, one's, um, that one's really cool. There's a lot of really cool animations of, of that. Yep. Yeah. 
kind of want to understand um, when I'm doing SOLIDWORKS simulations and like GTS simulations, I want to understand what's happening to them. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And so we are we are going to cover be covering some um, some theory behind finite elements too, just so you can kind of know. Yeah, so SOLIDWORKS simulation, GTS simulation, that's really interesting because they're they're kind of new players in the field. And so um, there's if you talk to certain people, some people don't respect SOLIDWORKS simulation all that much. Um, but you know, I haven't had a chance to play around with it too much myself, but I think it's it's kind of a cool thing that they're, they're getting into. Okay. All right, and so you know, I think um, you know, probably as we go along in the class, you know, we'll probably think of other applications uh, for finite elements, but you know, it's it's really kind of a really flexible kind of framework to do a lot of different things. Um, okay, and so are there are there any questions I can answer um, so far? Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is the finite element process, right? And so how do you act, how do we actually go about setting up a finite element simulation? Okay. And so this is going to be this. So this part here is going to be really important. So I'd say this is. I mean, the syllabus stuff is is important too, I guess. But you know, this part, you know, I want you guys to remember because what we're going to do on Thursdays, we're actually going to be diving right into the software. So Thursday is going to be our first Antis workshop. Okay. And so what you'll see is that when you guys are using Antis for the first time. We're going to be following this exact this exact process, okay? and so if you kind of know kind of conceptually what's going on in each kind of step of the process, it's going to help you you know kind of understand what's going on. Because I because I think you know what's easy what can be easy to do um, you know when you're using a software for the first time is you kind of you know you kind of look at the directions you kind of do exactly what the directions say you click the certain buttons you enter the certain data you know and that's and that's fine but then you know you don't really learn as much. So if you kind of really understand kind of the motivation behind each step, I think it kind of helps you kind of understand the fuller picture and then which consequently helps you do a more difficult problem. Okay. All right, so the first step is to define the geometry. Okay, And so the first step in any finite element simulation is to get a computer representation of what your geometry looks like. Okay. Um, and so for, uh, for ANSYS, basically what this means is that you need a CAD and so here you can see I, I have a screenshot from SOLIDWORKS, right? And so usually for a lot of uh, finite element analysis that's done in, uh, in the field, you know, most people are gonna develop their CAD model in SOLIDWORKS just because SOLIDWORKS is kind of the industry standard for, for this, okay? Or CATIA, I know a lot of people uh, in aerospace use CATIA. Okay? And then what you do from there is that you export your CAD file into a certain format, and then you load that format into ANSYS, okay? So it's kind of a two-step process. That's kind of what makes SOLIDWORKS simulation really interesting because they're trying to make it so that you kind of stay all within the same framework. I think I think they still have a bit of work to do in order to get really slow. Yeah, in order to get on the level of advances. So, but but you know, they're but they're working on it, which I think is cool. Okay. And so this is really important because what the geometry defines is that it defines first of all what the subject of your simulation is going to be. Okay. And so it's going to tell you, you know, what you're trying to um, what you're trying to simulate. It also defines kind of the physical boundaries for. And that's going to be important later when we apply boundary conditions. Okay, um, right. And so, just like I mentioned too, that you know, the most common way to do this is that you know people develop a CAD model in in a, in a certain software, and then they import that into uh, an FEA software. Like this. All right, number two, uh, step two is to specify the material properties. Okay, and so you know now that you have the geometry defined for your for your part. The next thing is to say, you know, what type of material your part is made out of, or maybe different parts of uh, different parts of your part are made of different materials. Okay? Uh, and and people kind of overlook this, or, or they kind of forget about it a lot. And and this, I think, is one of the more important steps, uh, because you know, intuitively, you know, right? if you, if you have a bar of steel versus a bar of plastic, right, that bar of plastic is going to behave a lot differently than steel. Right? But probably that bar of plastic, you can probably like Hulk smash that thing and twist it into a U. But you know, unless you actually are the whole, you can't really do that with a bar of steel. Right? And so every material is going to behave differently. So it's important that you know before you actually go about simulating, you define what those properties are, or, or you know, or even simply just define what the material is, so that you know, so that the so that the simulation results will be accurate. Okay. And so the and so some important properties that you need to define are things like Young's modulus, things like density, Poisson ratio, right? Um, so all these things will affect its its response, and it's going to affect how the simulation is going to run. Okay, uh, and there's a lot of different kind of material properties out there as well. And so the, on the very simple side, we have isotropic, which are kind of you know uh, spatially uniform. 
um, or you can have very complex properties as well. Like, like wood is a very, um, you know, is a good example of a complex property. Uh, um, you could. And so um, typically for the final project for this class, I let students kind of choose an application. And most of the time, those are parts with kind of different material properties and different parts. Yeah, and so the way that works is basically you're gonna load up an assembly into ANSYS and then different parts of the assembly you can assign different material properties to. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very, it's very common. All right, and so I think the first two steps are, you know, um, probably, you know, what you've done before, what you've thought about before. This is kind of the first kind of big FEA step, okay? Um, and so this next step I like to call discretizing. Um, or probably what you will be knowing it as on Thursday is meshing, okay? And so this is kind of the image that most people see when they think of like, you know, a computational kind of simulation where, you know, your, your geometry is broken up into these, into these shapes, okay? And the reason we do this is that, you know, even for computers, if you give it a somewhat complex geometry like this, you know, it actually has, it actually does have a hard time solving the differential equations on that geometry. And so what you need to do is that you need to take your geometry here, which can be any kind of shape, any kind of weird shape that you can think of, and actually break it up into a, a lot of simpler shapes, okay? And so for this particular mesh right here, I think these are mostly, um, you know, uh, rectangular blocks, right? And so if you look at each of the shapes here, you know, they're basically rectangular blocks, right? And so kind of a good way to kind of visualize this is that if you were to take your object and if you were to kind of build it out of Legos, like very simple Legos, that's kind of what that's kind of what it would look like, okay. Um, and this is important because you know once you kind of break up your geometry into these simple shapes, it makes it a lot easier for the computer to solve these um, solve the um, solve the differential equations, okay. And uh, each individual shape here is called an element, okay. And so that, that's kind of how finite elements gets its name. And so you know, um, once you mesh your geometry, you get a, a collection of elements that are connected to each other. And then you solve the differential equation on that kind of network of, of elements. Okay. And you know, the official name for this, I mean the textbook name for this is called discretizing, but I think for most of this class, we're actually going to call it meshing. Okay? So meshing and discretizing are kind of the same thing. Okay? All right. And so the next step is to apply the boundary conditions. Okay. And so the boundary conditions are um, you know, they they basically define how your system is going to behave at the boundaries of your geometry. Um, and so for example, so, you know, what we're going to do on Thursdays, we're going to simulate a, a plate under tension, okay? And so we have a kind of a, a plate, a rectangular plate, and we're going to be pulling on it, okay? And so the boundary conditions on that plate are is that on one end, we're going to have what's called a fixed, a fixed constraint. And so that plate is going to be fixed to a wall. And then on the other side, we're going to apply a force that's going to be pulling the plate in tension, okay? And so these are important because, you know, um, you can't run a finite element simulation without some kind of boundary conditions, okay? Um, and so, you know, some things, um, so boundary conditions can be a lot of different things, but most of the time they're gonna be things like constraints. And so, you know, things that kind of fix, fix the, um, you know, fix the motion uh, or some kind of load, okay? So any kind of external force or external pressure on the system, okay? Um, and that last point there kind of affects kind of the, the theory. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get into that. Um, but what I, what I want you guys to think about is that, you know, when you have a finite element simulation, you have your geometry, which is defined by the CAD file, and then you need to kind of, you also need to find kind of any kind of external forces or external influences on your geometry, and that's going to be the boundary conditions. Okay? All right, so this next part is called assembly, and so, uh, you know, for Thursday, we're not going to worry about this because ANSYS is going to do this for you, uh, but this is an important step in the theory. So once we start diving into finite element theory, you know, we're going to be talking about this, okay? But so I don't want to say too much about it now, um, but just know that, you know, we'll be going over this once we get into the theory. All right, and so the next part is to solve, okay? Which, you know, may sound a lot simpler than it actually is, um, but, you know, um, this, is, this is kind of when the computer's going to do its work, okay? And so kind of once you reach this point, so after an assembly, you, you, what, what you've basically done is that you've set up this gigantic linear algebra problem for your computer to solve, and the computer is just going to go in and solve. Okay? And so this is actually the part which is actually the easiest for, for you because you don't actually have to do anything because the computer is going to do all this work for you. Okay? And finally, the last step is to post-process. Okay? And so once, once the computer is done solving it, then you need to interpret those results and to apply them to whatever engineering project that you're doing. Okay? 
And so a lot of times this involves visualizing your, simply visualizing your results. And so a lot of times you're gonna view things like the deformation field. You're gonna view things like the stress, the stress field. Okay? And so, you know, this is kind of where a lot of people think of finite elements as stress, stress analysis. This is kind of where they get it from. Okay? Um, and this is kind of the fun part because you can, you can kind of produce a lot of nice looking figures that you can put into the report. Okay, um, so that's kind of the finite element process there. And so, you know, I know we went a little bit faster than, but, you know, we'll, we'll be going over these steps on Thursday as well, and you'll kind of see them directly in action in, in ANSYS. Uh, any questions on, on this so far? Okay, All right. it's a lot, I know it's a lot of information, but I think kind of once we start getting into the software, it'll make, it'll make a bit more sense. But, you know, if you kind of keep these in the back of your mind, it'll make kind of more sense kind of why we're doing each of those steps. Okay, and so like I mentioned before, you know, we are going to be diving into finite element theory a bit in this class. And so the question I, I always get from people is, you know, why, why bother with the background information? Why bother with theory, right? I know everyone just wants to play with ANSYS. Everyone just wants to, you know, do simulations and ANSYS, right? And so, you know, don't get me wrong. So finite element simulations are a very, very powerful tool, right? I'm, I'm probably the number one cheerleader for FEA in this, this entire college, right? I, I know what it's capable of. But at the same time, you know, you have to remember that FEA is, is just a tool, right? It's, it's, it's nothing more than that, right? And so it's, it's really no different than, you know, like a screwdriver or like a drill that you would find in, in an engineering lab, right? Um, I mean, it, in, in, by its nature, it's, it's very different than those, but it's, but it's just a tool, right? And so just like any tool, it has its limitations and best ways to use it, okay? And in order to use it properly, you need to kind of understand you know, kind of what's going on behind it so that you don't misuse it, okay? And the important thing that, you know, that you should know is that finite element simulations is not going to work all the time, okay? I think, I think a fallacy that a lot of beginners end up doing with finite elements is that, you know, they, they're really excited to use the software, they, they load up the cat file, they apply the boundary conditions, and they get, a, they get an image, and then they're like, wow, this is, this is real. And so they kind of treat their FEA software like God or something. But I'm here to tell you, like it's not, it's not, it's not like that, okay? Because you know what can happen a lot is that if you if you don't set up your mesh correctly, if you don't set up your boundary condition correctly, if you don't set up you know a lot of things correctly, you're going to get you know literally garbage results, right? So there's a, so there's a phrase that we use in finite elements called garbage in, garbage out. Right? And so if you put garbage into the FEA software, you're going to get garbage out. Okay? But the difficult thing with FEA is that sometimes it can be difficult to know you know what some garbage results actually look like. Okay? And so it's really important to understand the theory behind it all so that you can kind of recognize those things and make sure that your simulation results are actually accurate, okay? And, you know, you know and, and, and this is especially important because, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys are going to be graduating soon and, and, you know, a lot of you guys are going to go out there and, and get jobs where you're going to be using finite element um, software. I've had students that come back to me and say that, you know, this class helped them get a job, right? Um, but, you know, once you get out there, you know, believe it or not, you know, your company is going to be relying on you as an expert in finite element technology. Okay? And so, you know, as an expert, you know, it's your responsibility to really understand the tool that you're using so that you can actually use it well. Okay. And, you know, you can go, you can read through the news. There's, there's, there's so many horror stories out there of you know, people using finite elements. They designed a bridge, uh, but the bridge sucked. So then it fell and then a lot of people died. And so, you know, it's, you know, it's important to understand your tools. All right, so as an example, let's, let's talk about a veterinarian, okay? And so, you know, a veterinarian, um, you know, just like any job, they have to know what, what I like to call procedural skills, okay? And so you have, they have to understand, you know, how to give a shot to your animal. Okay? They have to understand something maybe like how to take a blood sample, maybe how to check eyes and ears, okay? Uh, but they also have to know a lot of theoretical conceptual knowledge as well, okay? So they have to understand why they're giving your animal a shot, right? And so you don't want to take your cat to the vet and say, oh, I gave them these five shots, just because I felt like it, right? You know, that's that's no good, right? You don't want to, you want all these random shots in your animal. Okay? They also have to know, you know, if your if your animal is sick, you know, they have to be able to tell you what's what's going on. Okay? And they also have to be able to interpret behavior, right? And so, you know, once you once you kind of are, are out there, you know, it's 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 not just you know that it's not just that you can push the buttons and you know make certain images appear. You have to kind of understand why those are happening, and more importantly, when things aren't going well. You have to kind of understand how to fix it. So you know that's that's why we focus on on the background information. All right, and so I think the last thing 
or the second to last thing is why ANSYS. Okay? Um, and so ANSYS is, uh, is, this, is the software group we're mostly going to be focusing on in this class. Okay? Um, and it's one of many. Okay? So it's, it's definitely not the only finite element software out there. Okay? Um, but it is one of the most common. Okay? And so you know, because of, of where this class is placed kind of in our curriculum, where it's kind of, you know, for a lot of you, the only finite element experience you're going to have, we want to make sure that, you know, you exit this class with some real practical skills okay, that you can actually take to the workplace. And ANSYS is kind of, you know, the, the one that, you know, a lot of companies use. And so you can kind of step in day one and start using ANSYS right now. Okay. And, you know, because of that, it's a real marketable skill. And so, you know, uh, even during this class, you can say that, you know, you're learning ANSYS or put ANSYS as a skill in your resume. And it's just going to generate that many more, that many more clicks. Okay? And, you know, and I, and I don't want this just to be an ANSYS class. Okay? And so remember, you know, we're, we're taking, uh, you know, quite a bit of time to talk about the theory. And so what I hope is that, you know, even though we're focusing just on ANSYS, you know, you can take a lot of what you've learned and a lot of the concepts and you can apply that to other software as well. Okay. Um, because even if you, even if you use a different software, so I know a common one out there is called Abacus. Um, and so even though if you use Abacus, you know, the buttons may be in a different, in a different location, or maybe the windows might be a little bit different, you know, you're still going to follow the same kind of general process. And so I want to kind of highlight that general process to you guys. So you can take those skills to any software. Okay? And probably the most important reason that, you know, um, that, um, you know, I can't say because it's not as, as flashy, but ANSYS is free. And free stuff is good stuff, right? And so, you know, and so today, I think we'll have time. Yeah, we're plenty of time. And so today, what I'm going to show you is, is where you can download the free student version of ANSYS so you can actually work on the stuff at home. So you don't have to come to the lab to do that as well. Okay. And, and it's free, you know, not only for, not only because we have the license, it's, it's literally free for everyone. And so, you know, I think it's, I, which I think is really smart for ANSYS because, you know, then a lot of people use their software to learn and then, you know, and then they actually use that in the company. Okay. Um, and so, you know, in the last part of the class, you know, we're also going to learn how to do what's called ver verification and validation, okay? and, and, right? and this is also an important skill for finite element engineers as well, because, you know, like we said, finite element FEA is not perfect. Okay? And so it, a, an important skill for you to learn is how to do what I like to call sanity checks to make sure that your results are actually accurate. Okay? Um, you know, because if you're going to use the finite element results to drive design, you know, you want to make sure that it's, it's actually important. Okay? Uh, but we're, we'll cover this kind of in the, in the later half of the class. Okay. Um, are there any questions on any of this before we start talking about the syllabus? Okay. All right. So hopefully that gave you kind of a good overview of kind of what to expect from the class, kind of what we're going to learn. Um, and then, you know, um, you know we'll, we'll Okay, so let's talk about the syllabus, right? All right, uh, so let's talk about office hours first. And so um, my office, you know, like I said before, is on the fifth floor of this building, um, but I'm actually not going to be there for office for most office hours. Okay, so I have three office hour slots, and so I have Monday nine to ten. I have Wednesday from four to five, and then Thursday from nine to ten. Okay, uh, but I actually can't be here on campus on Mondays and Wednesdays because I, I have you know other stuff to take care of kind of near home. And so. My Monday, my Monday and Wednesday office hours are actually going to be purely virtual, right? And so, and so I'll show you kind of later on the course website, there are Zoom links for Monday, Wednesday, Thursday office hours. And so if you want to join, you know, Monday, Wednesday office hours, you just have to go to the school, um, the course website, and then click on those links, and then it'll take you to the Zoom link where that's going to be, okay? And so the Thursday office hours are the only ones that I'm actually going to be physically here for, uh, but I will open up the, the Zoom room for Thursday office hours as well. So if you want to if you want to meet up for Thursday office hours, I mean you can't make it to campus. Just you know go on Zoom and, and I'll be there as well. Okay. And so office hours, you know, for for me, I think office hours are the best times to do things like um, you know if you're confused about a certain uh, topic in the course, if you're having trouble with homeworks, uh, or if you have some questions about the exam, right? Uh, office hours are the best time to to talk about those things. Okay. Uh, but also if you just want to stop by and say hi, that's that's nice too. Right. And so. You know, I've, I've had way too many sessions over the last few years in the pandemic where I'm sitting at my chair for an hour, staring at an empty Zoom room, just wondering if something's going to happen, right? And so if, if you even just stop by for a minute, just say hi, you know, you, you have brightened my day. It'll make my day just that much better. All right, learning objectives. And so, you know, in addition to the learning objectives you're going to see every day, I also have what I call course level learning objectives. 
And so these are the goals that I'm aiming for throughout this entire course. Okay, so by the time this course is over, you know, we will have accomplished these four, these four tasks. Okay. And they're all kind of related to, you know, first of all, understanding kind of the theory behind finite elements and then applying it in practice. And then also, you know, making sure the results are reliable. All right, homeworks and exams. Okay, so I have seven homework assignments. Um, six, six of those assignments are going to be ANSYS activities. And so those will be like kind of ANSYS labs that you'll start in the class and then finish up at home. And then one of those is going to be a problem set uh, based on the theory. Okay. Uh, there's going to be one midterm exam, which you're going to take kind of later on in the semester, uh, one midterm project, and then one final project. Okay. So there's, there's no final exam for this class. I know, that, I know that the registrar assigned kind of a final exam time slot, but we're not going to meet during that time. So we just have the final project. Okay. Um, I say, oh, well, I forgot to take this out, but you know, there's only one midterm exam. Um, and so it's actually going to be cumulative up to that point. And so, um, and so you know, normally I have more than one midterm, but for this class, you know, I switched it recently to have a midterm project and a midterm exam. Um, at the bottom of this slide, you can see all the dates that I have planned. And so the midterm project is going to be due on uh, Friday, October 21st, 5159. Okay. The midterm exam is going to take place in class uh, on Tuesday, November 1st. Okay. And then the final report is going to be due on uh, Monday, December 19th by 11.59 p.m. Okay. And so if you look at the final report due date, that's actually going to be the, the Monday after finals week, right? And so whenever I assign final projects in a class, I always like to give you guys a little bit more flexibility because I, I know your finals week is always just really crazy. Um, but it's, it's, it's really hard for me to push the due date back beyond this. Um, and so, you know, um, that week, um, I'm going to be grading the projects for your class, but also for all my other classes. And so, you know, I want to finish all that grading before Christmas. Uh, otherwise, I just don't see my family for Christmas. And that's not a good thing. They, they think I died or something. Okay, uh, any questions on, on this? Okay. Zoom. Okay, good. All right, so course grades. And so here are the grade, how the grades gonna be broken down. Okay, so homework is gonna be worth 10%. Uh, your mid, the midterm project's gonna be 25%. And the midterm exam is 25%. And the final project is 40%, okay? And so the reason homeworks are, are pretty low, and so normally I, I give more weight to the homeworks, but because a lot of the homework assignments in this class are just going to be purely ANSYS activities, um, I, mostly, I, I mostly just grade those for completion. Okay? Um, and so because of that, you know, I, I lowered the homework weights at only 10%. Okay? Um, and then you know, based, based on how you perform on all of these um, uh, things, then your, the final letter grade will be assigned kind of based on this breakdown. So these are, these are pretty standard. So I think those are... So the ANSYS activities will be based on completion, um, but the one homework assignment that's good, the one problem set homework assignment that's going to be based on the theory, I'm going to grade that one for correctness. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so usually, usually I don't have to do this because this is a technical elective, and you know most most people do well. Uh, but at the, if at the end of the class and the course grade and the overall course average, so that's everyone's grades kind of average together, are below a certain threshold, what I'll do is I'll add a flat amount of points to everyone's grade. So that you know the average is up there, right? and so for a technical elective like this, I like to have an average of around eighty percent. And you know, um, magically, you know, just um, the last few times I've taught this class, it's, it's always kind of hovered around around there. But if for some reason this this semester that the course grades are you know maybe 75, 76 percent, then I'll add you know four or five points to everyone's grade until we hit that average. So I like to keep it pretty simple. For All right, textbook. Uh, so the course textbook is not required. And so I, I said this on the very first day I started working here and uh, nothing has changed my mind since working here. And that I think the textbook industry is run by the mafia. And so I'm not in favor of giving the mafia any more money. So I try, always try really hard to not require any textbooks for my classes, okay? Um, and so I will be posting all the lecture notes for, uh, for the class on the course website. And so you can follow those along. And, you know, of course, I think that's going to be all that you need. Uh, but if you are interested in picking up um, the books for just your own reference, if you wanted to look at, you know, maybe some of the topics that we didn't cover, uh, or maybe you want to look at more examples or look at, um, you know, um, some of the topics in more detail, these are the two textbooks that I'm going to be following, okay? Um, and so um, the first one is, is going to be covering a lot of the theory. 
And the second one, um, that's going to be covering a lot of our ANSYS stuff. Right? And so the second, the second textbook in particular, they might have a newer version now because it's, you know, it's 2022. Uh, that one's pretty good because they, ha they have a lot of good ANSYS activities in there. So if you're, if you're interested in doing more ANSYS stuff, second textbook, I, I recommend it. But, you know, if you're going to pick it up, try to find a cheap one. You know, um, don't buy it for full price. You know, that's I think that goes for any textbook. Okay. Um, and so, for all the homework assignments and for all the ANSYS activities, you know, I'm going to be posting the full uh, problem set and everything that you need, and so you don't need a textbook for that. Okay. And so, if you if you do want to pick up a textbook, it's it's going to be just purely for your own reference. But you don't you don't need it for, for the class. Okay. All right, course website. So our course website is going to be on Canvas. Okay, and so I think you know by this point, probably a lot of people are used to it. Uh, but basically, you know, my, my stance with Canvas is that any content that I create for the class, whether it be lecture notes, whether it be homework assignments, homework solutions, exam solutions, study guides, you know, anything that I make for the class, you know, I'm going to put it on Canvas. And so, you know, Canvas is going to be kind of your first stop shop kind of for everything in this class. Okay? And what I plan to do after this is to kind of take just a brief tour of the, of the Canvas site just so you kind of know uh, where I put everything and how I organize it. Um, so the announcements are going to be made through Canvas as well, and so if you're if you're enrolled in the class, it'll uh, it'll email you automatically. But if you wanted to look at the announcements, you can do that too. Okay. And another thing I made for this class is a Discord server. And so um, you know I, I started doing this during the pandemic, but I think it's it's actually ended up really well, and so I've kept doing it for all my classes. And so originally, you know, during the pandemic, we weren't able to have kind of this where everyone's kind of meeting physically in the classroom. And so, you know, I tried to kind of recreate that as best as I could with the Discord server, kind of give you guys a, a place where you can, you know, talk with your classmates, you know, arrange, um, ask questions, arrange study groups, you know, uh, make memes of me, make fun of me, you know, um, all that good stuff, right? And so, um, you know, I, I found that the Discord server is a great thing. And so even though we're, we're technically back, we're technically back in, in full person, I think the Discord server kind of gives you a way to kind of you know, ask questions maybe late at night, you know, maybe right before homework due, you can ask a question on the Discord server and, and someone can help you. Right. Um, and so, you know, the Discord server, you know, it's, it's, it's mostly a resource for you guys. And so I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be muting notifications on it because it, it gets a, a little bit much for me. Um, but, you know, if there, if there is a question that no one can answer, you can tag me and then I'll come in and I'll, I'll answer the question. Okay. Uh, and so an important note. And so, you know, I use Discord a lot, um, mostly to talk with my friends and family. But because of that, um, you know, if, if if a lot of students start messaging me directly on Discord, it, it gets to be kind of a little bit much. Okay, uh, I remember I remember um, kind of the first time that I I, I I ran Discord. It was my wife's birthday, and I, I told the class that you know I'm taking her out for her birthday, you know, the whole day. Uh, and I think I got like messages from like 27 different students on that day, <laughs> and so you know it was uh, you know. It was, it was not fun, but uh, so that's why I kind of had to put a cap on it. So, you know, you I, 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 wait a second. Did you have your volume on the base? Were they the games? Oh, no, no, yeah. It's, it, was, it was just buzzing. It was just buzzing in my pocket. So, you know, um, uh, it was, it was kind of more for, for me than, than for my um, And so, anyway, so, so I, 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 I'm not closing off completely. And so, you know, I, I, I you can still message me directly on Discord. Uh, but try to only do it in a, an emergency situation. So something that needs my kind of my immediate attention, you know, that's that's kind of the only time when you can message me on this. Okay. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, if you have a question about the course, um, try to send me an email and then I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, course policies. And so um, let's talk about late homeworks first. And so I, I do accept late homeworks um, just because, you know, um, I know it can be, it, it can always be tough to kind of keep up with all the deadlines because you guys have a, a bajillion things going on. And so just because a deadline is passed, you know, doesn't mean that I, I, you know, I still want you guys to do the assignment. Okay. And I want to give you guys some kind of credit. For it. And that's especially true in this class because each, each of the answers activities that we're going to do, you know, they teach you a different important aspect of the software that you're going to need, you know, that I think is important for you to use answers um, professionally. Um, and so even if you miss a deadline, you know, I still want you to turn it in, uh, but I do have to uh, limit it to a certain extent, right? And so my policy is that, you know, each day that you, that is late, uh, that you turn in a homework assignment, I dock 10%. Okay? And so if you just need one additional day or two additional days, you know, what I've seen is that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect uh, people's grades all too much, but it's just 10, 20%. 
Um, but I but I stopped this after a week. So you know you can turn you can turn in late homeworks up to a week after it's done. Okay? Just kind of just kind of keep in mind the 10% for all this. Okay. Uh, regrades. And so um, and so you know as, as much as I try to convince people every semester, I don't try to make mistakes when I grade your stuff, but but it happens. And so you know if if I make a mistake in grading your uh, your assignments. Um, you know, either 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 uh, I marked something wrong that was that shouldn't be wrong, or maybe you just added a point incorrectly. You know, please let me know. Um, you know, I, I want to be as open with these as, as as I can. So you know, please let me know when I make a mistake, and I'm always happy to to correct it or, or talk with you more about it. Okay. All right, and lastly, emails. And so, uh, if you're going to be emailing me about this class, I, I ask that you put the name of the class in the in the subject line. So, eg, me four ten. Okay. And so the reason for this is that you know I'm teaching two other classes, and I'm also uh, taking on uh, some new advising duties this semester too. And so my inbox is is kind of a war zone right now. It's, like, it's uh, there's there's a lot going on there. And so if you put EGB four ten in the in the subject line, uh, it really helps me out a lot. It kind of organizes my inbox. So I say you know, you know this person is they're emailing me about finite elements, and I kind of know kind of what what to do there. Okay. And so if you do that, then I, then I promise you, I'll, I'll get back to you latest 48 hours, but usually with emails, I'm pretty good. And so I'll, I'll either get back to you same day, um, sometimes within five minutes, if I happen to be on. Um, if not, then the next day, but at the absolute latest, I'll get back to you within 48 hours. Okay. Uh, all right, any questions on, on this? Okay. All right, graduate credit. And so, um, you know, I think I think there's some graduate students taking this class as well. And so if you if you are a graduate student, um, because this is a 400 level class, you need to do one extra assignment uh, in order to get credit in order for this to count for your for, for your graduate degree. Okay, um, I haven't decided what the graduate assignment is going to be this semester yet. And so um, I'll probably get back to those students um, later on. Um, and so I, I do have a list of the graduate students. But uh, if you are a graduate student, just, you know, uh, just let me know just so you know, I don't I don't miss you later on. Okay. Um, and then you just have to complete that before the semester is up, you know, um, you know, just so, just so you can get credit. All right, academic dishonesty. So I, I think, I think this is kind of a less of, a little bit less of an issue in this class because I think people are generally excited to learn answers in this class. Um, but you know, this class is no different from any other class, and so you know, academic dishonesty will not will not be tolerated. Okay? And if it occurs on, on something serious like, like, like an exam or a project, then you know, at the very least, you're going to get a zero in that assignment, or worse, you, know, you could get an F in the whole course. Right? Uh, and, that's, and that's kind of just the policies that we have in our department. So it's, it's, you know, it's, I know it's harsh, but it kind of is what it is. Okay? But I, I will say that you know, our academic uh, dishonesty policies are, are harsh, but you know, I, I'm here to kind of help you out as, as, as much as I can. I've, I've never, I, I always think of myself as kind of like, not, not as much as a, of a gatekeeper, but as kind of like, you know, someone that's here to help you achieve, you know, your goals, right? And so I think this class is, is kind of a great example of that because this is an elective class. Like you don't have to take this class, but you're here because you want to learn answers, right? Um, and so, you know, I'm here to kind of help you achieve, achieve those goals as much as possible. So if you ever feel in this class that you know you're falling behind you know, you're falling behind on the activities or you know you don't think you're going to do well on, on the midterm you know the only thing i ask is that you reach out to me first and then you know give me a chance to kind of help you out okay um and if you do that you know i promise you i'm not going to judge you i'm not going to criticize you i'm not going to lecture you you know you can literally come up to me on week 10 before the midterm and say i have done literally nothing in this class and i will say all right you know let's 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 see what we can do to get you back on track that's not my job. My job is not here to, to judge you or criticize you. My job is to teach you skills. And you know, any way that I can do that is, is you know, you have to let me know. Right? But if you but if and so if you talk to me before that happens, then you know, then I can I can do everything I can. But if it gets to the point of academic dishonesty, then from there it, it's unfortunately it's it's out of my hands. And a lot of that you know goes, it starts to escalate to the department level, to the college level, to the university level. And, you know, then then it's then it's really hard to kind of you know do stuff and so you know the only thing I ask you know I you know I I've, I've struggled in my classes you know as much as anyone you know when I, when I was in your shoes and you know I think what what have really, what would have really helped me back then was to say for someone to say you know I'm I'm here to help you and I'm here to help you okay? and so you know, just give me the opportunity to help you and I'll, I promise I'll do everything I can okay uh, and so uh, 
Last thing on the slides is I want to remind you of the first homework assignment. And so homework zero is just a simple email introduction. Okay? And so uh, all you have to do is send me an email. Okay? Um, ideally, this email should introduce yourself, okay? uh, but you don't even have to do that. And so you, know, you get full credit just by sending me an email with your name on it. Okay? Um, and you can even just email me, say, hey, dickbag, give me credit for this assignment. And I will give you credit for the assignment because that's what I said here. But I do actually, but I, I, I would enjoy it a lot more if you actually, you know, took the time to introduce yourself, okay? Uh, because, you know, we're going to be together for the next, for the next semester, basically until Christmas. And so, you know, I, I really do enjoy getting to know you guys as people, as students. And so the more you write about yourself, you know, you know, the better it is for me, okay? And I actually do go in and I read every single email that you send me and I respond to every single one. Okay? And so, you know, this is probably my most email heavy week of the semester, but I think it's the week that I enjoy the most. Because, you know, then I get to hear kind of where you guys are coming from, you know, what you guys are hoping to learn. And, you know, it's just, it's just great. Okay. And so I have these four questions here. You don't have to answer these questions, but, you know, if, you, if you're struggling to find out kind of what to talk about, you know, these four questions here are kind of just a conversation stuff. Okay. Um, and so, you know, things like, you know, what kind of career do you want to have after graduating? What do you want to learn from this course? Do you have any worries or concerns? Uh, or just, you know, what are your hobbies? Okay. Um, and, and so, again, you don't have to answer those questions, um, but, you know, if it helps you to kind of answer them, then those are great. Okay. So if you send me an email by this Friday at 11.59, then uh, you can get full credit because that's when I'm going to be doing all the grading for it. Okay. And uh, make sure you put in eJimmy410 in the subject. Okay. All right. And so that's it for the slides. And so what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to take a tour of the course website. Uh, and I'm going to show you where you can download the free student version of ANSYS, because I think a lot of you will be interested in doing that for, for this class. Okay. Uh, but before we tour the website, are there, are there any questions on, on the syllabus? Yeah. Uh, for homework, since it is going to be mostly on ANSYS, um, we're not turning in like a physical, right? We're just going to be sending them stuff? Right, right. So all the submissions will be done online. And actually, even for the ANSYS stuff, I, I don't ask for your ANSYS files because then it gets it gets you know, a little bit hard to kind of download everything and read them. So what you'll see is that you'll see from the from the first activity, I, I have you put together a report of your ANSYS activities. And so there's going to be like screenshots that you have to share, certain results that you have to share, but it's never the files. And so it's, it's just it's just the report. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take a tour of the website. Let me just make sure, okay, there's no more slides, good. Okay, and so here is the Canvas site. And so um, first thing you'll see on the Canvas site is the name of the course, so that's good, okay? Uh, here is me, and so if you click on this, you can see like my little Tinder profile of teaching, and so you can read that if you want, okay? I haven't updated that in years, and so it might be out of date a little bit. Um, class times Tuesdays, Thursdays from 5.30 to 6.45. And so all of you know this because all of you are here, which is great. And then the location is in CS304, which is in this room. Okay? And so here's a description of the course that you'll find on the syllabus. Here's the course learning objectives. Um, here is the syllabus itself. Okay? And so if you want to um, see all the stuff we talked about today in fine print, you can go ahead and download it there. Right? Here we have all the Zoom links. And so if you want to view the lectures on Zoom, you can do that here as well. Okay. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't mention this yet, but all the lectures will be streamed on Zoom. Okay. And so apparently we're not supposed to be doing this anymore, but, but you are free to attend the lectures on Zoom. Okay, So I'm, I'm not taking attendance or anything. Um, and so if, you, if it works better for your schedule or you know, um, then you can view it on Zoom. You can even do the answers activities on Zoom. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I will say though, on the days that we do the ANSYS activities, it is a lot easier for me to help you if you are in the classroom. And so what I'm going to do, what, what, you know, you'll see on Thursday. So, you know, what I'm, what you're going to do on Thursday is, you know, I'm going to give you a task to do an ANSYS and I'm, and I'm going to kind of let you go at it. And then if you have questions then you can raise your hand, it's, it's easy for me to kind of go to you, go to you physically here. I will, I will help the people on Zoom. Just know that if you're on Zoom, you're kind of the last in line because I'm going to walk around the classroom, help everyone else, and then come back to the podium here to help the Zoom people. Right? And so if you if you can make it for the ANSYS activity days, then it's those are kind of the best days to make it to class. But if it's just a pure lecture, um, you know, of course it's of course it's great to have you here. Um, it's not that I don't want to see you. I love seeing you guys. You guys, all, you guys all look great. But you know, if you if it's more convenient for you, you can you can attend on Zoom. 
All right, and so uh, here are the Zoom links for the office hours. And so Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Remember, Monday, Wednesday are virtual only. And then if you want to um, join the Discord server, this is the link to do so. Okay. All right, and so I, where I think most people will be spending their time on the course website is on this outline down here. Okay, so it's on the bottom of the, uh, of the homepage. Okay. And what you'll see is that I've broken down the course into kind of a week by week planner. Okay. And so as we go along in the course, these links will become clickable. Okay. So if you click on week one right here, and this, this page here will kind of give you a summary of what we're going to go over this week. So here's kind of a, a brief blurb of what I've written. Here are the learning objectives for the week. Okay. Um, all the lectures are going to be recorded. And so once I've, uh, once the recording is done, once the lecture is done, I'll post the YouTube links here. Okay. So we can, these links will become clickable. And then any homework assignment or any answer activity, you can find links in them here. Um, and then any kind of lecture, lecture notes or lecture slides or homework documents and stuff, you can find them here as well. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I like to organize in terms of weeks just because, you know, I like to think of it as, you know, this week is here's everything you need to know. Um, I try to get these up kind of the Friday before the week. And so if you want to kind of look at the material beforehand, then, you know, it will be up for you. But I think this is kind of where most people will look on the course website. Okay. All right, so besides that, we have the assignments tab. And so if you click on assignments, this is kind of a summary of all the assignments that you, that you have, okay? Um, and so because, because most of the submissions here are gonna be um, digital, you're gonna be uploading reports, this is where you would do it, okay? And so if you click on answer activity one, um, you can click on this here to um, upload, upload your, up your, upload your submission. Okay? But I think, I think you guys have done that you know, quite a few times. All right, so if you click on grades, you can see your grade in the class right now. Okay, so you can see the scores for each of your assignments and it'll tabulate your current score. Okay. You click on people. This is the list of everyone in the class. Okay. And finally, so the pages tab, don't worry about that one. And then finally, the files tab here. And so if you're looking for a specific file, and so say you're looking for a specific um, lecture note set, then you can find that here. Okay, so actually all the lecture notes are updated or uploaded already. Uh, or if you're looking for a specific ANSYS file, maybe a file for an activity, you can find that here. Okay. Uh, and so all the homework assignments will be posted here. You know, the final project um, files will be here, midterm project files, solutions. And so you know, if you're looking for a specific file, then this files tab is kind of where, where you need to go. Okay. <coughs> all right, and so, you know, hopefully it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, I try to keep the, the website as clean as, as, as possible, but you know, that's kind of where you can find by most of them. Um, any questions on, on the Canvas site? Okay, all right, so we, we are almost out of time, um, but one thing I wanna make sure we cover today is how to download the student version of ANSYS. Okay? And so like I mentioned before, ANSYS is completely free for, for students and actually for anyone. Okay? And so the, the way that I do it, I don't, actually, I don't actually remember the link, but I just- yeah, it's in the Oh, it's in the syllabus, yeah. great, awesome. So you can, you can either follow that link in the syllabus or you can do what I normally do. I just say download ANSYS student. Okay. And then you can click the first link here. Okay. And so um, it should take you to a page that looks like this. You can accept all cookies so ANSYS can spy on you. Okay. Um, and then I think this is where people get confused because there's, there's a lot of different um, downloads you can have here. Okay. And so there's ANSYS student, ANSYS discovery student, electronics, on scale, you even have LS Diana now and SCAVE, whatever the hell that is. Okay? But the one we're going to be using in this class is ANSYS Student. Okay? And so this is this is the one that you want to download. Right? And so the reason we, we do this one is that the interface for this ANSYS student uh, is basically exactly the same as the professional interface. Okay? And so because you guys are learning how to use ANSYS professionally, it makes sense to use the same interface. Okay? And so if you click on this link here for ANSYS Student, then it can, you can download it right it is a fairly bulky software, so I think it's it's a, it's a few gigabytes. I don't remember exactly how much it is, and so you want to make sure that you have enough room on your, on your computer. All right, um, and that is it. Okay, and so and so you don't you don't need to download ANSYS to your computer because these lab computers should have them. Uh, by the way, all these computers in this room are grand spanking new, and so um, our IT our IT consultant in our department. Worked very hard over the summer. He worked overtime to make sure these computers were upgraded. Um, and so it's it's a mix of excitement because the, the, the computers before were getting a little bit old. 
uh, but also a little bit of stress because, you know, I don't think we've ever run ANSYS on all these computers at the same time. And so Thursday will be kind of fun to see what's going to happen. Okay. And so you don't have to download the student one, but if you want to work on the stuff at home, this is kind of how you would be. Okay. Uh, all right, and so that's all I have for today. And so are there any final questions? All right, so that's it for me. So thank you guys for coming today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your evening. Um, I'll stick around for a while if you have any other specific questions. Uh, but if not, I'll see you guys Thursday for our first ANSYS activity. Hi. Okay, yeah, so uh, so for the wait list, uh, I kind of take at least 10 students on the wait list, so if you're top 10, I can join you. So I'll, I'll put in the request on the wait list, and usually I, I wait until, because people, people tend to move around. Uh, and so I, I, I say the, the wait list kind of gets stabilized by the way. Oh, if you if you take it yeah, I'll, I'll try to add it. The way I say 10, it was like 11, which is the class. <laughs> So I think they want to even out. Yeah. But I, 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 I think it's fine. I think if I don't need to talk to my spies, I'm not going to talk to my spies. So the whole thing is to go by this room. And this room is good to have parts of pride. It's just, because I know the department will do deeper. So beyond that, it's like you have to use it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 okay. 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 So, you have friends in the class. And so, all the lectures will be posted. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. Um, but yeah. hopefully, by Friday, if you're on Discord, I'll tell you But hopefully, by Friday, I'll have a solid answer. Like I told them, I'll try to add as much as I can. But past a certain point, Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you, 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 you contact it. Uh, okay. So I think there's the there's the place to go. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.